Hello and welcome to this special episode of Exabeam Presents ET Studios, winning the AI arms race in cyber in association with ET CISO. I'm your host, Divina Lasson. Now, as AI rapidly transforms the cyber threat landscape, adversaries are using AI to scale and automate their attacks. Security operation leaders must evolve and adapt to stay ahead of the game, utilizing AI-driven defense strategies to bolster detection, response, and resilience. Today, we are joined by Steve Wilson, Chief Product Officer at Exabeam, to explore how organizations can harness AI to enhance their security posture. Steve is a trailblazer in Gen AI and cybersecurity, leading advancements in AI-powered defense and the protection of AI systems. As the Chief Product Officer at Exabeam, Steve's work has redefined how security analysts approach cyber defense with cutting-edge AI tools. He's also the founder of the OWASP Top 10 for Large Language Model Applications and the author of the Developer's Playbook for Large Language Model Security, a truly critical resource for securing AI systems. Without further ado, Steve, very warm welcome to ET Studios. It's such a pleasure to have you today. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, you know, we're here to talk about a really important and quite a big, uh, also very trending topic today, the AI arms race in cyber. Um, of course, we're going to get through all the various solutions that your organizations offer. But before that, if you can help, we're just uh, laying sort of a foundation for us. Now, of course, AI is being used today in quite an um, advanced manner to uh, enhance cyber attacks, to help all automate them and just make them more and more sophisticated. Therefore, of course, we're talking about the AI cyber arms race. Uh, can you tell us what are some of the aspects that is really getting AI to enable the security threats, to enable the cyber attacks? And what threats are you seeing really prevalent here in the Indian market? So over the past two years, really, as we've seen the rise of, of things like chat GPT and large language models, the hacker community has found themselves with more and more access to advanced artificial intelligence. Yes. And they've begun using this to automate attacks. Um, more than that, we've found that the, the extension of phishing, which has been one of the biggest cybersecurity threats, has become escalated all the way from, from poorly spelled emails to now real-time sure. artificially intelligence enhanced deep fakes. Yep. Wow. Are there some specific uh, threats that you see prevalent here in the Indian market specifically? I think the threats here in India are similar to many of the other markets. And I've been, I've been other places in Asia and Europe as well as in the US just in the last six months. And I think what we are seeing is a range of attacks that go anywhere from what we call the, the script kitty in their basement yes. all the way up to nation state enabled actors right. who now all have access to the same tools. And we've seen reports from big organizations like OpenAI and Google that they are struggling to keep the hackers from using their advanced tools. But just in the past month or two, we've seen advanced open source AI yes. coming out of China that everyone has sure. universal access to now. Wow, yeah, so truly uh, global scale threats that every organization, every from large to small needs to be uh, well aware of. And I think one of the big threats, of course, is how AI can be used against the organizations themselves in-house. Can you tell us a little bit about how this pans out, how this threat can, um, first of all, look and some of the steps in which they can be mitigated? So I think that there's there's a couple different classes of things. And one falls broadly into the category that that we call insider risk, but this yes. might be um, you know, truly somebody who works at your company who's planning on doing something nefarious, but more and more it's around compromised credentials. And with the rise of these super advanced phishing, spear phishing, deep fake attacks, it's more and more likely that someone will lose control of their credentials and their accounts. And when somebody has those credentials, your traditional cyber defense techniques simply do not work. The only way to detect those things is what we call behavioral profiling. And that's where machine learning becomes really important because 
I can study the usage patterns in real time across dozens, hundreds, or thousands of workers in your organization. And I can find when those deviate from normal. And those become important signals then that we can pick up on and lead to the beginning of investigations for cybersecurity defense. All right. So in that case, are there any specific tips or steps that you would say all the CISOs out there watching our episode today can really take to ensure the most ethical and efficient use of AI in cybersecurity? So it's, it's interesting. Cybersecurity has such a amount of buzz around it yes. when it comes to ethics. And we've certainly seen cases of, of big corporations embarrassing themselves by doing things with, with questionable ethics. But I think, you know, broadly, the ethics and even regulatory discussions simply come down to three things. And one of them is about intellectual property. And it's what are you using to train your models, yes. what are those learning from, do you have rights to use that data? So you wanna be very conscious of that. The next one is around broadly employment, and there's a lot of concern um, in terms of the regulatory environment about what are you doing relative to your employees or your hiring practices with respect to AI. And the last one, which, which gets a lot of press, but, but isn't the urgent concern right now, is just broadly safety mm, of these things. Absolutely. And I think everybody's, everybody's watched Terminator, um, so they're, they're concerned about this. But I think those are some, some longer term concerns that at this point we can, we can relegate to the researchers to be okay. investigating. <laughs> True. All right. So on that note, uh, what are some of the solutions that Exabeam is offering? Uh, you know, some of your really uh, AI focused solutions that helps mitigate all the risks we're talking about, helps organizations to prevent inside threats. Um, some of the steps and uh, solutions that Exabeam offers. So I think Exabeam is really unique in the cybersecurity realm because it was built as an artificial intelligence yeah. company from day one. Wow. And so back in 2014, Exabeam introduced a capability that they called user and entity behavior analytics. Um, the reason they had to invent this clumsy name was because AI was not yet cool. Okay. <laughs> and people would think you're crazy if back then you'd said you were using AI to do something productive. But really what that meant is that Exabeam was a pioneer in this area of using machine learning to be able to sift through gigabytes, terabytes, now even petabytes of data to find those signals. True. Um, and that's really led to our recent introduction of what we call new scale analytics. Okay. And that's an entirely new security analytics engine that is designed to sift through all of the data that your organization collects and find those, those needles in the haystack that are those important signals that you need to investigate. The thing that we introduced last year is what we call Exabeam Copilot. And that's a new set of advanced AI capabilities built on top of that underpinning of that advanced AI engine. And what we can really do there is give any every one of your human analysts in your security operations center a, a virtual buddy okay. who's going to help them run investigations. And so if you look at just maybe a single line from a log file of one of billions you're collecting, there might be 20, 30, 40 questions that an advanced analyst would think that they might have to ask. It's too much for most people to sure, be able to handle absolutely. in their heads and do manually. Yes. And so with these new AI tools, we can quickly automate that, quickly come to conclusions, now explain them in simple English, analyst in the SOC, and they can ask follow-up questions immediately. They don't have to continually okay. escalate those tickets to another more experienced analyst. And so it's really gotten very quick adoption. In fact, it's probably been the fastest adopted feature wow. in 10 years for us. Oh, fantastic. So, of course, uh, as you mentioned, there are so many challenges along the way. Uh, and there are many CISOs, of course, who would like to integrate AI deeper into the uh, in-house uh, inbuilt systems, enhance cybersecurity, but they do face these challenges and perhaps don't always know how best to integrate 
AI in. So how does Exabeam come in and really guide that process? What would you also say to the CISOs out there who are trying to take that step forward but don't quite know what the right path is? Yeah, I think one of the challenges right now is that there is there's so much of this AI technology out there. Yes. And it it goes across industry, but if you if you turn on the cable news channel in your country that that covers financial matters, they will be talking about AI constantly. Okay, so the, sure. the pressure is there. Um, technologically, one of the things that happened, though, with the introduction of, of chat GPT and those kind of technologies yes. is it's never been easier to create a compelling demo of AI functionality. Okay. The trick is, does that demo scale to deliver real value yes. in the use cases so, that yes. you're pursuing? Because Every company now has a chat bot that they can demonstrate that looks like it's going to solve all of True. your problems. <laughs> and the fact is, most of them don't. Um, most of them actually wind up being net negative value. And they're trying to solve this very broad use case yes. with very little data integration and very little training. Um, so it looks like it's giving good answers, but it's not. And so we, we've had to take the the opposite tack with this, which is base what we can do with this new advanced AI on high quality data that we have, keep the use cases narrow, but places that we know that it's going to add tremendous okay. value. Yes. Um, again, are there any specific roadblocks that you see Indian CISOs facing and you know some guidelines for them? I think the thing that we see here is... Um, Obviously, there, there are a lot of industries in India, and a, a lot of the people in software are working in, um, in service-based industries where you have a lot of people, a lot of employees, a lot of um, software developers, programmers, technical support people. And the more people that you have in these environments, the more security threats that Absolutely. those introduce. And, and CISOs will often tell you that the, the biggest security threat that they face is not the nation state actor from the outside, it's yes. their own employees. Yes. And, and that is one of the reasons that it's so important to be able to have a set of tools that are carefully looking at the behaviors of your employee population and, and not to, to watch them for are they working or are they being productive? That's a different question. But are they doing today the kinds of things they were doing yesterday or did sure. their behavior suddenly shift that might indicate a problem that needs to be investigated. Okay, okay wonderful. Uh, well, Steve, thank you so much for all this. Uh, before we wrap up, are there any major uh, projections that you see in 2025 in the years ahead when it comes to major cyber threats that, again, CISOs and all organizations should look out for? So I think what we see is what we talked about at the beginning. This is an AI arms race. Yes. And the the bad guys are not slowing down. They are completely leaned into this. They are looking for the best technologies that they can get their hands on. The deep fakes that are out there today can be spotted. The yes. same way that old phishing emails were bad if you just looked at them, you can see these deep fakes. But they're going to get harder and harder month over month over month to detect. And we're not long from the point where you're going to get phone calls or video calls from people you know, wow. but it's wow, not really them. Um, we're getting to the point where the studies that are out there say that these, these LLMs can start to automate certain types of attacks. They're not great at it yet, but again, the acceleration that we see at which they're getting better month yes. over month over month. We often say in security that Security by obscurity is not an answer. You can't depend on someone not finding your vulnerabilities. Um, and that's never been more true than it is now yeah. because the rate at which the adversaries can automate these things is going to go up by 10x and then 10x again year over year. Yeah. So you really need to look at shoring up your security posture, making sure you have the right tools in place making sure that your analysts have the best AI tools to detect and thwart these kinds of attacks. 
just could you give us a breakdown a little bit how exactly AI and all the tools you're talking about uh, are going to really help in this aspect and really exactly mitigate the risks, uh, prevent rather as well? I think that we see a couple things. One is the, the immediate uses that people are making today of AI in the security operations center have a lot to do with threat analysis and threat hunting. But really the place where this is expanding is as we go into much more full-featured cybersecurity intelligent agents, they're going to start to become much more proactive advisors. Right. So they're going to be looking at your posture. What data do you have access to? What data do you have access to? And what kind of signals is that able to get you where the agents will be able to advise, hey, you're weak at detecting these certain types of threats. This is what you should do to shore that up. And so what we're going to see is the agents really moving up the stack into more and more advisory roles in terms of making sure that you have everything that you need to be secure, not just in the moment, but helping you plan your roadmaps, helping you show your value, and helping you really be successful as an organization. Yeah, wow, all right. So finally, um, if you can help us just wrap this entire conversation by understanding, again, Exabeam's role here. Uh, what exactly, what are the innovations that Exabeam is looking at today? Of course, we're looking at a landscape that's so rapidly evolving. I mean, agility is the order of the day. So how does Exabeam keep up, and how do you keep the process of innovation going? I think there's a, there's a saying that came from one of my favorite science fiction authors, um, William Gibson, who wrote a really prescient science fiction story back in the 80s. And much of what he talked about then has, yes. has since become true. And people asked him, how did you predict this? And he said, um, the future is already here. Yes. It's just not evenly distributed. Wow. And so our job is to be out in front of where our customers are today. We're looking everywhere at what are the latest advances in AI? What are the latest attacks that, that we're seeing? We have over 3,000 global customers. Yes, yes, yes. And so we are able to see a lot of these threats before most of our customers will see them. So our job is to synthesize this position around what are the threats that are out there? What are the best technologies that we can bring for defense? And basically predict that future ahead of when it happens to our customers so they're prepared when it does. Yeah, absolutely. And as you say, of course, the threats are very much on a global scale and perhaps uniform, but are there any specific uh, tangible benefits or tools or products that uh, the Indian customer can look forward to from Exabeam? So, I think when we look at our, our Exabeam co-pilot and where that's going as we evolve it into more and more of an intelligent agent system, we're already getting feedback from our customers that their analysts are 2x or even three times more performant or faster at doing investigations than they were before. And, and that's huge in a world where we see the acceleration from the attackers. We need to see that same kind of acceleration from the defenders. And really what I expect to see is the capabilities from the AI. Um, we're going to get better reasoning. We're going to get more decision making and we're going to get more autonomy. And so I see the role in the SOC as more and more the, the humans become the team leaders of groups of intelligent agents, okay. which are patrolling your networks, which are looking for those threats and helping keep you safe, while the humans get to focus more on decision making and advanced planning. Okay, okay, wow, wonderful. Well, Steve, thank you so much. You've really broken down the entire journey for us and what it means today in today's rapidly evolving environment to win the AI arms race in cyber. Thank you for sharing all your insights. It's been such a pleasure. Hey, thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, that's a wrap on today's episode of Exabeam Presents ET Studios winning the AI arms race in cyber in association with ET CISO. A huge thanks to Steve Wilson for sharing his invaluable insights on how AI can enhance security operations and help organizations stay ahead of the evolving cyber threats. We hope you found today's discussion insightful. Do stay tuned for more expert perspectives in future episodes. Until next time, many thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.